Remember back when I did that history of the Takeda clan video? In that video I said I was going to start doing more clan history videos after the end of my Sengoku Jidai series. Well, I came to the decision that I wanted to do some more of those, but additionally, I think it would be cool if I left the deciding process regarding which clans I make videos on in the hands of my Patreon supporters. So instead of choosing myself, the decision will be voted upon by my Patreon subscribers. As of right now, I will make polls and throw out some interesting clan ideas that can be selected, but eventually I may just start accepting clan ideas from my Patreon supporters directly and incorporating those ideas into the polls. With any luck, I'm going to try to make about one of these clan history videos a month. So if you want a say in which clans I make videos on and you aren't already a supporter on Patreon, I encourage you to come check it out. It doesn't matter what tier supporter you are, you will have access to these monthly polls as well as my weekly polls to determine my Samurai Saturday spotlights on social media. So with that said, the clan that was selected by poll for this video was the famous Shimazu clan of Kyushu. Let's dive back in time to witness their fascinating history throughout the ages. And like I mentioned in my previous clan history video, the purpose here is not to go into every minute detail, but rather illustrate the overall story of the clan, from their beginnings to their potential end, if they even ended at all. In 1185, following the end of the Genpei War, which completely reshaped Japan and paved the way to the establishment of the Kamakura Shogunate, the lands of the defeated Taira clan were seized and redistributed to families loyal to the victorious Minamoto clan. Among these territories was that of the Shimazu Shoin, an estate that held land throughout much of the southern provinces of Kyushu, these being Satsuma, Osumi, and Hyuga. These territories would be handed over to a six-year-old child who, in time, would come to be known as Koremune Tadahiza. Now, this figure of Tadahiza is sort of odd to place. While his name links him to a Koremune clan that had originated in Shikoku, but by the time of the Genpei War had moved to Kyoto, where many of them had served the imperial court, the actual name of Tadahiza is often referenced with none other than Minamoto no Yoritomo the first shogun of the Kamakura shogunate, who was often said to be his actual father. There were stories that at one point claimed he was an illegitimate child of the shogun, but over time those were eventually put to rest some point near the end of the Edo period. Whatever the case of his lineage, Tadahisa in his young age became the Jito or steward of the Shimazu Shoen. Yet several years later it appears he would be promoted to the official position of military land governor, known as Shugo. Yet obviously because of his age and the fact that the headquarters for the shogunate was so far from Kyushu, the actual governing of the estate was instead delegated to an administrator known as a daikan. Tarahiza would eventually grow into a fine young lord and by 1196 moved to Satsuma where he built himself a proper residency. It was here he finally took on the name of his estate and formally became Shimazu Tarahiza. Henceforth, his family would forever bear that name. The Kamon or family crest of the Shimazu would be a symbol known as a Kutsua, which appears a lot like a cross. Originally the design would appear like this, but after several centuries the design would change to incorporate a circle surrounding it. It is not entirely known why this design was chosen or what it means in terms of the Shimazu family, but there are several possible stories, with ideas such as the symbol being perceived as a positive Chinese character to ward off disaster and to invite happiness, or even that Shogun Yoritomo himself made that shape with two chopsticks and told young Tarahiza that he should adopt the symbol as his kamon. Whatever the case, it would certainly become one of the more unique and recognizable family crests found in Japan, and would even perplex missionaries who would later visit Japan, who believed it to have some strange tie to Christianity. But getting back to the early years of the clan, over the next several decades, even after the death of Tarahiza in 1227, members of the Shimazu family would spread out across Japan with several establishing cadet branches of the family in such areas like Echizen and Wakasa, while many others would even go to found entirely new clans of their own, with names such as Yamada, Niro, and Kawakami, just to say a few. It was becoming evident that the roots of the Shimazu family were starting to sink deep into Japan. 
Yet although the primary ruling area of the Shimazu was in southern Kyushu, family heads continued to spend much of their time in Kamakura, allowing subordinates to govern the land in their stead. That finally changed following the conclusion of the Mongol invasions of 1274 and 1281. It had been many of the clans located in the west and significantly in Kyushu who were put to the task fighting against the Mongol hordes. Following the end of the invasions, they were also some of the same clans who would be ill repaid for their efforts. This prompted a slow and steady growth of resentment towards the Kamakura Shogunate, as cracks were beginning to show in its foundation. If the Shogunate could not properly reward clans who had fought hard in its name, what was the incentive to stay loyal to it at all? Thus, many clans throughout Kyushu began to turn their backs on the Shogun and become more autonomous on their own. The Shimazu holding a considerable portion of territory on the island would be one such clan. As the third head of the family, Shimazu Hizetsune relocated his household to Satsuma from Kamakura and did away with the Daikon administrator. From this point on, the Shimazu would rule their own territory directly. By 1331, we see the outbreak of the Genko War, which led to the overthrow of the Kamakura Shogunate in favor of a return to imperial authority under Emperor Kodaigo. The Shimazu would participate in this struggle and would aid in the toppling of the original Hojo family and the destruction of the Bakufu by 1333. By this point, the clan was under the lordship of Shimazu Sarahiza, and after the war, the Shimazu would emerge stronger than they had been in recent years, regaining territory that had been lost to them since their establishment. Several years later, Sarahiza would lend his support to Ashikaga Takauji in his new war against Emperor Godaigo, who had managed to alienate mostly all of the samurai who had just restored him to power. Takauji would then go on to establish his new Ashikaga Shogunate in Kyoto. Yet following this conflict, we see the outbreak of the Nanbokucho period, when two rival imperial courts fought over influence for a time, causing chaos across Japan as many clans chose to support one side or the other. The Shimazu throughout this time would, for the most part, support the more legitimate northern court in Kyoto, although there were instances when they did swap sides and fight on behalf of the southern court. During this age, they would clash with the Hiki clan of Kyushu, who would capture Hyuga from them and stall out the Shimazu period of dominance. To further their problems, when Shimazu Sarahiza died in 1363, his remaining territory in Satsuma and Osumi would end up being divided between his two living sons. Morohiza would take Satsuma, while Ujihiza would take Osumi. Both branches would coexist for a time, until finally, several decades following the end of the Nanbokucho period, they turned on each other, resulting in the Osumi branch of the family overtaking the Satsuma branch and reuniting the clan under a single banner in 1430. By the outbreak of the Onin War in 1467, the Shimazu had once again become a regional powerhouse in southern Kyushu. Yet, with the death of the clan head Shimazu Tatsuhiza in 1474, the situation again began to fall apart for them, as internal struggles within the clan caused yet another civil war to break out a decade later. By this point, we are now into the age of the Sengoku Jidai, the age of the country at war, and it is here I am going to start going into a bit more detail, largely because it is at this point that Shimazu really start to become more significant in the grand scheme of Japanese history. The Onin War had destabilized the nation, and put on display the weakness of the Ashikaga Shogunate and their inability to keep the many samurai clans across the country in check. Many Shugo military land governors were now becoming daimyo lords, or great names, regional autonomous powers that were seeking to grow their territory and sphere of influence. Unfortunately, with civil unrest still at an all-time high in the domain of the Shimazu clan, they were not able to capitalize on the early years of this period. Instead, the conflict continued to rage into all-out chaos, as more minor families within the southern provinces of Kyushu rose up into open rebellion. By 1508, Shimazu Taramasa, the current head of the family, decided enough was enough and committed seppuku. In the aftermath of the struggle, the Kimotsuki family had secured ownership of Osumi and the Ito clan that of Hyuga. The Shimazu were now only left with Satsuma. Shortly thereafter, in threat of further hostilities within the Shimazu family, the young Shimazu Takahisa would be made the new head of the clan in aims to appease the remaining competing branches within the family. And luckily, it is under the leadership of Takahisa that order was restored to the family. 
Yet much would need to be done if the Shimazu were ever to become a regional power again. During Takahisa's reign, much would happen that would secure a brighter future for the family. First that should be mentioned would be the birth of his four sons, Yoshihisa, Yoshihiro, Iehisa, and Toshihisa, boys that would each grow up to display military prowess and aptitudes for leadership. Another important development would be the introduction of Europeans who would arrive in 1543 when a Portuguese vessel crashed on the shores of Tanagashima, an island lorded over by Tanagashima Tokitaka, a vassal to the Shimazu. The Shimazu would be one of the first Japanese clans to begin trading with the West, utilizing their Western firearms. In fact, the Shimazu are largely regarded to be the first clan in all of Japan to use Western firearms in battle. It was obvious that the Shimazu, although very traditionalist, were not opposed to learning what they could from the outside world, from traders and missionaries. By 1566, Takahisa would decide to retire as head of the clan and allow his eldest son, Yoshihisa, to succeed him. He would bring new stability to the clan and finally begin a campaign of reconquest against their rivals. Soon, the armies of the Shimazu under the leadership of the Shimazu brothers, Yoshihisa, Yoshihiro, Iehisa, and Toshihisa, marched against the Kimotsuki, delivering to them a crushing defeat that paved the way to the Shimazu retaking ownership of Osumi by 1570. By 1572, the ambitious Ito clan of Hyuga would attempt to push their way south into Osumi with the aid of the Sagara clan of Higo. And it is here we start to see the real brilliance of Shimazu Yoshihiro, who would completely outplay his foes, even with their numerical advantage, routing both armies and dealing a crippling blow against the Ito in the Battle of Kizakihara, a clash often regarded to as the Okehezama of Kyushu. With the Ito clan devastated following their defeat to Yoshihiro, the Shimazu were now poised to move in and reclaim Hyuga, which they did by 1578, which also in turn allowed them to subjugate the minor powers of Higo province soon after. But this would then immediately bring them into direct conflict with the Otomo clan, the major power of northern Kyushu. But although both clans would begin clashing, there would be no real exchange of territory for several years. Instead, the Shimazu would bide their time as a situation in Hizen province played out, keeping a close eye on the rise of the Ryazoji. When they attempted to crush the minor Arima clan, the Shimazu would send aid to defend against the Ryazoji. This would result in the 1584 Battle of Okitanawate, in which the Ryazoji daimyo, Ryazoji Takanobu, would be slain. With their defeat, Shimazu influence over the province was secured. Now, only two major powers remained on the island, and it would soon be time for the Shimazu to advance against the Otomo, to finally finish them off. By 1586, their final push against the Otomo began, and fearing the worst, Otomo Sorin, patriarch of the Otomo family, sent a desperate plea for aid to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, requesting that he help defeat the Shimazu. Hideyoshi, who was just coming off his victory in seizing the island of Shikoku, was all too eager to intervene and would accept what was an obvious invitation to exert his influence onto Kyushu. For a brief moment, the Shimazu won control over the entirety of Kyushu, crushing the last of the Otomo resistance. Yet soon, the armies of the Toyotomi were to come. The Shimazu would try their hardest to defend, but unfortunately, they were just too outnumbered by Hideyoshi's forces, and by 1587, the Shimazu were at last pushed back to Satsuma and defeated. While some, like Yoshihiro, wanted to carry on the fight, in the end, he would be overruled by his brother Yoshihisa, who formally surrendered. Yet this defeat would not be the end of the Shimazu, as Hideyoshi would instead be merciful to them as he was also to the Chosokabe of Shikoku. In exchange for their loyalty, they would be able to retain control over Satsuma and Osumi, and a small portion of Yuga. In the end, although the Shimazu were defeated, they still came out of the conflict as a major power on the island regardless, as new lines were drawn. However, Yoshihisa, who had led the clan to their mightiest point prior to their defeat, at this time stepped away to take on the life of a monk, while Yoshihiro became the de facto head of the family in his stead. It is still argued whether Yoshihisa actually maintained control of the clan even while living now as a monk. 
Three years later, Hideyoshi would officially unify Japan behind him after the defeat of the later Hojo and the pacification of the North. Yet, while the country looked as if it was coming into a new age of peace, by 1592, Japan was at war again, this time in a conflict with a foreign country, Korea. This clash would be remembered as the Imjin War, Hideyoshi's desperate attempt to subjugate Korea and march into China. The invasion force would be mostly made up of armies under daimyo throughout western Japan, thus the Shimazu were called upon to lend heavy support. During the initial campaign, starting in 1592, Yoshihiro would lead the forces of the 4th Division, which numbered around 14,000, and during the second invasion of 1597, he would command around 10,000. Unfortunately, Hideyoshi's war in Korea did not end well, and upon his death in 1598, Japan looked to be falling into a new internal conflict yet again. Tokugawa Ieyasu, wishing to seize power away from the Toyotomi family and those that would influence its future, began gathering support into a larger Eastern Army faction. While the Toyotomi loyalist Ishida Mitsunari would rally together a Western Army faction, to which the Shimazu would end up backing. By 1600, this new war began, and while Eastern and Western army forces would clash all across the country, including intense fighting on the island of Kyushu itself, Yoshihiro and a detachment of Shimazu forces would be present at the monumental Battle of Sekigahara, and it would be the Shimazu who would end up being one of the most interesting elements of the struggle. Prior to the battle, Yoshihiro would attempt to persuade Ishida Mitsunari into letting his forces do a surprise night raid on Tokugawa positions. Yet, Mitsunari would turn the offer down, and in doing so, somehow also slight the Shimazu. Thus, during the battle the following day, Yoshihiro would decide to disobey Mitsunari's orders and not move his troops whatsoever. At least until they were finally assaulted by forces under I Naomasa. Yoshihiro would order the Shimazu soldiers to do a forward charge in attempts to push past the enemy lines and retreat through to the other side. His plan would work, and would not only result in a gunshot wound that would later cause the death of Inaomasa, but unfortunately would also cause his nephew Shimazu Toyohiza to be killed in the process. Yoshihiro and his remaining soldiers would make a successful retreat back to Kyushu, where he was eventually forced to recognize Tokugawa authority. Yet, it is largely suspected that due to Yoshihiro's refusal to move his troops at the Battle of Sekigahara, Tokugawa Ieyasu, who was on the verge of establishing his own shogunate, would decide not to strip the Shimazu of their land holdings. Instead, they would simply be branded as Tozama Daimyo, outsiders who would be scrutinized and continually looked down upon with suspicion. In 1609, however, we see the Shimazu embark on a new campaign, albeit with the approval of the newly established Tokugawa shogunate. For many years, the Ryukyu Kingdom had existed to the south of Japan, located on various islands including Okinawa. Due to a complete breakdown of communication and a reluctance to accommodate most of Japan's demands, the Shimazu would eventually launch an invasion that would result in Ryukyu's final subjugation. But of course, by this point, Japan was coming into the Edo period, a new age of peace, besides other revolts and rebellions that the shogunate would suppress. By 1633, we finally see Japan close most of its borders to the outside world in what is remembered as Sakoku, their isolationist foreign policy. This was done not only to quell Western colonial influence and the spread of Christianity, but also to halt the flow of trade income that many Western Tozama daimyo were experiencing, making them particularly wealthy through a number of Nanban trade ports. Throughout the remainder of the Edo period, the Shimazu would continue to reign over Satsuma and Osumi as one of the most powerful clans in the entire country, even while still being labeled as outsiders. It wasn't until the 1850s when, after the arrival of U.S. Commodore Matthew Perry, Japan was forced to reopen their borders, that things started to heat up again, with the Shimazu being one of the major powers at the forefront. Being one of the clans who not only did not like their Tozama status, but also saw the recent actions of the shogunate as weak in the face of foreign powers, the Shimazu would join forces with that of the like-minded Mori clan of Choshu Domain, in what is remembered as the Sacho Alliance, as both clans wished to see an end to shogunal rule and a return of imperial authority and traditionalism. By 1868, they would be joined by more clans who shared this ideology, and after the extremely important Boshin War, forces of the Imperial Loyalists, such as the Shimazu and their allies, would overthrow the Shogunate and bring about the Meiji Restoration, 
as Japan would be completely transformed into a modernizing imperial state, reminiscent of Western powers. This would not go entirely smoothly though either, as there were those such as Saigo Takamori, the famous Satsuma general and later statesman, who grew weary at the rate at which Japan was changing, and pushed for a return to tradition and a slowing of general modernization. He and his supporters would later cause the Satsuma Rebellion, in which he and his followers fought a symbolic losing war against the new imperial government. By the way, for those who somehow don't know, this is largely what the plot of The Last Samurai is based off of. Following his death and their defeat, they would become martyrs of sorts, prompting many traditionalist elements to return, largely influencing the new Japanese imperial military who took up many samurai-esque traditions. The Shimazu family continued to be an important family throughout the rule of imperial Japan. During both world wars, the Shimazu family would be headed by Shimazu Tadashige, who became a naval officer and rear admiral of the Imperial Japanese Navy. He would serve during the First World War, but would retire several years before the outbreak of the Second World War. Following Japan's defeat in 1945, the Shimazu family would unfortunately fall upon hard times, as the Shimazu family palace in Tokyo would be seized by the US occupation force, and later turned into the main hall for Seisen University. Facing new financial troubles, Tadashige would be forced to sell off much of the Shimazu family's treasures, including the Shimazu family archives, which luckily did make their way into the hands of Tokyo University. Today, the Shimazu family still lives on, with Shimazu Nobuhisa as its current patriarch. With a long and storied past and continuing on into the future, the Shimazu family remains one of the most significant and influential samurai families of all time. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the history of the Shimazu. They are truly one of the greatest clans of all time. And as I stated at the start of this video, I do plan on making more of these clan history videos on a more regular basis, and they will all come to be decided by my supporters on Patreon. So if you want a say in which clan I cover next, come think about supporting the channel on Patreon. But with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.